Hello, I'm Kimilia. Welcome to Kini News. The police are confident that they can get fugitive business person Lo Tae Jo or Jo Lo back to Malaysia to face action over his alleged role in the 1MDB scandal. This is according to Inspector General of Police Razaruddin Hussein. Razaruddin assured that the police have never stopped investigating the case but asked to be given time to complete their task. He also told the media that he cannot answer questions regarding the whereabouts of Joe Lo or in which country former 1MDB executive Jasmine Liu was hiding in. He stressed that revealing such information about any suspects would just tip off the persons concerned and help them to evade authorities. Razaruddin was referring to Liu, an associate of Lo who was arrested in Kuala Lumpur last Friday and remanded on Saturday. Sebenarnya, kalau Jasmine Lo pun kita boleh bawa balik, at any time, masa sahaja akan menentukan. Pihak polis ini tidak pernah memberhentikan apa-apa juga siasatan kita. Meanwhile, Lu's lawyers have revealed that she will fully cooperate with authorities investigating the 1MDB scandal and wants to assist them in expediting asset recovery efforts related to the case. Former 1MDB executive Jasmine Liu Aiswan, who was arrested by police on Friday, wants to assist authorities in expediting asset recovery efforts related to the 1MDB scandal. This is according to her lawyers, Amir Hamza Arshad and Edmund Bon. In a statement, they said Liu would give her full cooperation to authorities in their ongoing 1MDB investigations and to facilitate and assist the Malaysian government in expediting its asset recovery efforts. They also said that their client requested privacy and space to do what is necessary. They said that Liu has always treated Malaysia as her home and, when appropriate, will reveal the facts and circumstances surrounding her years away from Malaysia. Liu's lawyers added that she had full trust in the Malaysian judicial and legal system and will face all matters accordingly. Yesterday, Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail had revealed that police have arrested Lu, an alleged associate of fugitive business person Lo Teg Jo, who was purportedly involved in the 1MDB scandal. Saifuddin said Lu was arrested in Kuala Lumpur and taken to the Dangwangi District Police Headquarters, with the police obtaining a remand order against her on Saturday. Saifuddin also said that he was not privy to the progress of the investigation, including whether Lu has disclosed any information about Lo. Lu had been alleged to be one of those in Lo's inner circle. She was one of the suspects wanted by authorities to facilitate the probe into 1MDB. Back to the IGP, in his press conference today, Razaruddin also revealed that Sanusi is being investigated by the police over his recent remarks on the Sultan of Selangor. Police have opened an investigation paper against Kedah caretaker Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Matnor. This is over his recent remarks that allegedly insulted the Sultan of Selangor. Inspector General of Police Razaruddin Hussein told a press conference today that he is being investigated for offenses related to race, religion and royalty, or 3R. He said the investigation should take around seven days to wrap up as police already had a special task force that focuses on 3R cases. He also advised politicians to stop touching on 3R issues to avoid stoking tension, especially in the run-up to the state elections. This, he stressed, is dangerous especially when such sensitive issues are touched by influential figures. Razaruddin was referring to Sanusi's remark at a recent drama where he allegedly insulted Sultan Sharafuddin Idris Shah in choosing the state's Menteri Besar. During the video of the speech, which has gone viral on social media, Sanusi can be seen comparing the Kedah Sultan and his Selangor counterpart, whom he alleged had chosen a lousy Menteri Besar. Sanusi's recent remarks have been criticized by various parties today. This included Fahmi Fadzil, who told him that he would have to bear the consequences of his actions. Communications and Digital Minister Fahmi Fadzil has told Kedah caretaker Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Matnor to bear the consequences of his actions. 
This was over an alleged insult by Sanusi to the Sultan of Selangor. Fahmi said the past election director's remark over the role of the state ruler on the appointment of the Selangor Menteri Besar was rude and amounted to treason. He added that Sanusi's remarks were clearly against the reminder by various quarters to refrain from making statements related to race, religion and royalty. Malam tadi, Sanusi perlekehkan Duli Yang Maha Mulia Sultan Selangor. Dia ejeknya. Itu tu biadab, itu tu derhaka. Itulah kualiti yang ada pada Perikatan Nasional. Jadi, saya tak nak cakap lebih-lebih. Saya tak nak sebut lebih dari itu. Tapi, setelah peringatan daripada duli-duli yang maha mulia raja-raja, daripada Perdana Menteri, daripada IGP, berani buat, berani hadap. Fahmi said this in response to Sanusi's remark at a recent drama where he allegedly insulted Sultan Sharafuddin Idris Shah in choosing the state's Menteri Besar. During the video of the speech, which has gone viral on social media, Sanusi can be seen comparing the Kedah Sultan and his Selangor counterpart, whom he alleged has chosen a lousy Menteri Besar. Anthony Lok has also hit out at Sanusi. This was over his claim that non-Muslims are the biggest givers and takers of bribes. DAP Secretary General Anthony Lok has hit out at caretaker Kedah Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Madnor over his claims that non-Muslims are the biggest givers and takers of bribes. In a statement posted on his Facebook account yesterday, Lok said that the DAP strongly condemns the baseless and irresponsible statement by Sanusi. He said this type of sweeping statement is baseless and also creates resentment between races in Malaysia's multiracial society. He added that if Sanusi can't provide the evidence, he should issue an open apology. Lok said that everyone should seek to fight corruption together and everyone involved in corruption is wrong, regardless of their racial background. He added that corruption cannot be attributed to any particular race as wrong is still wrong no matter who it is. He said repeated statements like this prove that Perikatan National is destructive to racial harmony in Malaysia and needs to be rejected for the sake of Malaysian unity. Yesterday, Sanusi had stood by a past narrative that non-Muslims are the most involved in corruption. He said, quote, Go take a look at the records of people getting arrested for giving and receiving bribes. There are more non-Muslims. Sanusi said this in response to a question on how PN plans to garner support from non-Muslims in the upcoming state elections when one of its leaders had previously accused non-Muslims of being the root of corruption. The government may consider a new law to tackle those who play up issues of race, religion and royalty. According to Azalina, this was being considered as a solution to the 3R issue, which had become more common lately. The government is mulling a new law to impose civil penalties on those who play up sentiments on race, religion and royalty, or 3R. This is according to Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Law and Institutional Reform, Azalina Othman Said. Azalina told reporters after a forum yesterday that currently, any offences involving the 3R issue was investigated under the Sedition Act 1948. She said this act was more geared towards elements of criminal offences, causing prosecution to take a long time due to legal procedures. With this in mind, Azalina said they needed to evaluate it and come up with an act that is punitive. According to her, the challenge faced at the moment is when social media is used to play up 3R sentiments. It can be denied and there is no solid evidence to prove it. Therefore, she said the existence of the new act was a solution to the 3R issue that had become more prevalent in the country in recent years and would ensure the needs of the future generation are better met. Azalina added that the proposal to create the new law had been presented to the cabinet yesterday and received a positive response. She said the new act would be like the Maintenance of Racial Harmony Act in Singapore, but in a local context. 
And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.